I want to talk a little bit about how our, our departments are normally structured, um, which is uh, production designers get are usually the first hires. Uh, sometimes we get hired even before a line producer is hired uh, because the studio wants to know what the vision of the film is. And until they understand how we would approach it visually, they don't really know how to put a dollar figure to, uh, to an initial budget. So we often get hired first on. And very, very quickly, as soon as we get a green light, as soon as we're off and running and we're going to start creating things for our camera, uh, our next hire is going to be an art director who works with us and our set director. Now, you have to understand that these gentlemen and lady, this gentleman and this lady, uh, are representative of a craft that really takes what we do and brings it to life. It, uh, they, they work within a palette that's evolved over, uh, for the film, and then they take and populate each space with stuff that, like I said in the beginning, evokes a sense of time and place and of character. You, you take on a job, you take on a mindset, and you, I, call, I call it delivering yourself up to the new God. So, for instance, when I did Fight Club, you know, Fight Club is basically about beating the shit out of each other. And um, by the end of that movie, everybody was really tense, you know, because they had immersed themselves in that mindset, and that's kind of what it takes. And for us, that translates into the nuts and bolts of what that character is. So in Fight Club, they made so. I had to figure out how to make soap. And there's no book you can get on how to make soap. <laughs> I found out how to make soap on the underground militia websites. That's how I learned to make soap. Because those guys realized that if civilization melts down, they need soap. And that's how we learned to make soap. You know, we spend a lot of time thinking of backstories for the people in the um, and sometimes the writers have written out some backstories, sometimes the director talks about it. Sometimes nobody talks about it, and you have to do it yourself anyway. Sometimes you're creating an environment in a film that doesn't have any people. There's no characters in the movie that name the environment. And I can give an example. I remember I worked on a, a blow on my movie, like a Michael Bay film or something like that. You know, you're always doing some big action sequence in a web. Well, you try to make, make it interesting because. You have another making a character. I'm making a So that aren't even in the So observing interesting spaces becomes really important. And that can come through being in a place. It can come through newspaper articles. There's some great journalists and photographers. Absolutely amazing. The stuff you'll just don't get on the internet. And I'm, I'm tearing them out of the air trying to go out with that incredible, you know, hookah lounge in the rock or whatever it is. Every film is different. You have to break down the series of images that are going to tell the story, and then you look at the most cost of the way of rendering it. It's not all green screen. Um, in 300, for instance, if an actor leaned on it, walked up on it, cast a shadow on it, it was built. But what we did was we also had designed into the set exactly what the whole image, the final image was going to be. So when the actors walked on stage on the day of shooting, they saw a partial set or they saw whatever it is they were going to be walking on or lowering their spears on. But there's also a series of renderings on the set that show what you see the time ago. But the thing about research is, you cannot let it get away in your story. You've got to be willing to throw it all out the window if it isn't right. And a wonderful example that I've always found uh, is uh, I love the movie Gladiator. Now, I know quite a bit about Rome. I know quite a bit about architecture, and I'm an Italian American. Gladiator's got nothing to do <laughs> with any of that stuff. And I have a screen. I have a screening series by which In fact, I'm going to invite you guys to the screening tomorrow night. You're going to see. But we ran the Gladiator. We had really stopped it. You know, it was like the greatest story in the world. Yeah. And I had to hurt him and say, you know, this movie's all bullshit. And he was delighted. He said, you know, right? It's not about Rome. It's about Nazi Germany. This is Nazi Germany. And you know, you look at the movie now, and it is so stylized. It looks like an animated film, Gladiator. You know, we all thought it was like, look at that. I mean, it's like, and you compare this to other movies, and that's the kind of thing I'll tell you about at the end of the hour. There's a great lesson there about research is great. Don't let it trick you up. The first thing you can do is use it against the director. Like when the director doesn't like something, well, this is what's right. This is real. Let's go get fired.
higher up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little different than most decorators in that I don't like to do because it's exactly what John is talking about. Those images start to clutter up my brain eventually from having a visual idea. So, uh, yes, I'll do research to get the period correct, or if I am a little stumped by a character and need some spark or ideas, I'll do some research. But I don't want to be in my world creating with all this imagery in my head. So, I dial back on the research. I have a good secret for the people that are one of the art directors. Are there, is there anyone who wants to be an art director? Okay. Because we're directors, you should know this. <laughs> what I've learned, what I've learned is if you are the first person to draw that picture, you're up working on a movie, and there's a scene that says something, and you scribble down a picture, you don't have to draw very well, but you have to draw enough. You draw like a heavy ceiling or a heavy column or it's dark or it's this or that. And you show that to the director, chances are it will be moving. Because it'll go on his head. 